now we're recording. Welcome to Binary Jazz. I don't even know if it's my turn to do intros, but I figured I would just go ahead and interrupt the Zoom intro and do it. Uh, speaking to you live from Zoom version 5.5.0, I'm so happy to be with you today. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't know if that was the right version. I- I'm with my friends. That's the important part. Allison, Chris, both on the internet. If you want to find them, go to Binary Jazz at us. There are links. If you click them, it takes you places. Surprise yourself. Wow yourself. Binary Jazz at us. Also, like us on Facebook. Nope. Nope. Don't like us on Facebook. No. Unlike us on Facebook. Well, we're not uh, on Facebook. Tell your friends on Facebook to like us on YouTube and Apple uh, Podcasts and Spotify and uh, Tumblr and Shopify and everywhere uh, that Baidu. podcasts can pod. <laughs> everywhere, yeah, yeah. Uh, the premise is uh, uh, Allison makes a topic. Chris and I debate what the topic actually means. Uh, most frequently in a very incorrect manner. And then at the end of the show, we learn something and promptly forget it. So what was last week's topic? Uh, complementary schismogenesis. Yes, that had something to do with artificial intelligence or... No, not at all. It had something to do with you were here, bioluminescence. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was or was it your evil twin? <laughs> Oh, how much would that suck if there was an, if I had an evil twin, I mean, Gary and Barry? Shh. <laughs> It'd be Gary and Barry, and Barry's out there like overinflating car tires. It's like pranks that take effort. Like so, instead of like letting the air out, like he's got like a tire pump. It's like, woo! Now you're two psi high, so your tire tread wear is not going to be equal across the entire width of the tread. That's what your evil awesome. twin would do. Yeah, yeah, I have to assume so. <laughs> you have to assume that your evil twin would in overinflate car tires as a, only as a slightly, <laughs> only yes, slightly. What if? What if? But if you are indeed the evil twin, then what if your the good twin is like an astronaut? Oh, I'd be so freaking jealous. Maybe that's why. That's I overinflate what makes car him tires. evil. Yeah, that's what makes you why evil. Why act out? Yeah, like what if you weren't an astronaut? <laughs> <sighs> I uh yeah. I uh, I listened to a podcast called The Space Above Us. And um the dude that uh does it is JP something or other, and he uh works for NASA at uh the Godard Space Center uh as a software developer. And uh it just has like a great demeanor on the show. But also, like, I feel like just really nailed this concept where he's like, I'm just going to take one episode and talk about, like, a single space flight. So I'm deep into the space shuttle right now. Actually, they just fixed Hubble for the first time. And uh, one episode, like, talking about that. And that's, it's so immersive, and I'm so into whatever flight it is. And, like, those are the astronauts I think about, you know, so... Uh, well, on the subject of podcasts, I suppose, uh, this is a podcast, by the way, in case you uh, were not aware. Shit. I uh, left that part out. And, uh, I've been listening to a lot of the Adventure Zone, uh, and, uh, I'm pretty hooked to onto that, too. It gets, it gets, it starts off as, like, a, a sort of a goof, uh, and they're just sort of fucking around in D&D, uh, and then it gets, like, somewhere around like probably episode 40 or something they actually get like seriously attached to like the story and the characters and um everything and then it becomes uh a lot i don't know more interesting more interesting for me i mean it's still funny and still sort of a comedy podcast but uh but it's it's yeah it's 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 now it's a it's like it's got its its needles it's got its claws hooks hooks into me um hey i think we had a uh, segment last week where we talked about uh, cooking yeah i made i made falafel mm. yeah uh and uh some two garlicky tzatziki sauce but the falafel i realized 
I, I don't actually know like what defines a good falafel. I've had lots of varying kinds of falafel and I'm like, eh, that one was fine. But I've never had one where I'm like, oh damn, that was a good falafel. I bet Chris and I both have like an immediate memory of like the best falafel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I, actually, I'm actually hopeful like that you'll uh, I was, I was that. thinking yeah. about so, a really good falafel that I've had. I'm going to close my eyes and imagine and you just regale me with your falafel tales. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't even know what, what was in it per se. It, the good falafel has like a particular sort of like dry, but still kind of bready texture. That's, that's like, I haven't been, we haven't been able to, to sort of reproduce with the falafel that we have made at home, like from scratch. Um, I think maybe the type of falafel that we're making is, is different, or maybe it's just because we don't deep fry it. Um, that might make a big difference. Um, and uh i mean honestly like the texture is what sets it apart like because i think about the falafel that i make and it doesn't have the texture that i think of when i think of really good falafel. what's the texture you think of is it pillowy not really pillowy it's sort of like it's sort of like crunchy on the outside but soft inside and it's 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 dry but it's got like a it's it's bready and crumbly but not like not like it's, a dough ball yeah it's like neither dry nor wet but perfect yeah. is perfect <laughs> Okay. That's the sweet spot that I can't. So know. like relate it to like a hush puppy. I don't know what I... <laughs> what? I don't know. You know what hush puppies are? Like, well, I've like heard it, but like wait, in really? In relation Is this a regional shoes? thing? Yeah, in relation really? to shoes. <laughs> oh. Is it like a cornbread a type thing or ish? Yeah, usually served with like fried fish. But Southern in nature. Oh, I mean, I know yeah, you're not fried fish. I haven't been ordering the fish. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it, that's usually like where you'd find it. It's like an establishment where they'd be serving fried fish, but it's, it's, a, it's a thing unto its own. It's like a, a, a side of kind of cornbread-ish, but, but fried on the outside and... Hmm. So I, well, have a, I, have a, I have a question. <laughs> it's just like, I'm going to save us. Uh, yeah, I am. Um, Thank so you. last week, uh, last week Googling I mentioned puppy. that we had a comment yeah. on, uh, a YouTube video, Daffy Nition, and the comment was, Hey, so yeah. I responded to that comment and I said, Hey, uh, and then, and then they responded, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they they responded uh what to my hey <laughs> and now i'm you, confused you, you, so what's a good response nothing i don't yeah yeah i haven't responded yet because i'm i'm chicken I'm, butt <laughs> yeah <chicken> <laughs> <laughs> hey hey what chicken butt yeah i mean is this, that is that I, the appropriate response Yes. I don't know if appropriate comes into this equation. All right. What? I will switch <laughs> accounts to binary jazz to the channel so I can respond with the official. Uh, you can throw in like either the registered logo or the trademark icon. Either emoji would be appropriate in the situation. Haven't responded yet. There's chicken butt. Oh, wait, we have more. Oh, we have oh. one. Oh, that's from a year ago. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Gary, when you become back. independently wealthy, um, <laughs> we I'll fly to Paris with you and take you to the, my favorite falafel place. Yeah, falafel that place works for me. Paris? Yeah, it's the best falafel I've ever had. And I, I thought it was hokey, and I was like, I'm not. This is silly, um, and it's touristy. And I was like, but it's the best. I was like, they know what they're doing. That's why this line is so long. <laughs> yeah. I, okay. I'm. I'm there. Independently wealthy. I will put that on my to-do list. Just two tickets and two falafel. I've got <laughs> oh. two tickets to falafel paradise. It's just called Paris. Paris Day? It's just Paris Day. <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, what what do you put on your falafel? Everything. What? Oh, that's a lot. What does that entail? Like Anything that they have, I will put on <laughs> Okay. Whatever, whatever. Um, I love pickled anything. So yeah, the more the better. Uh, parsley, and if they have tabbouleh and they want to put that on, great. Hummus, yep. 
hot sauce, um, onion, lettuce. Yep, it's ridiculous. Okay. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. Tomato. Okay. Waffle. <laughs> Another <laughs> falafel, <laughs> like a slightly smaller falafel, and add finitum <laughs> forever. That's what the uh, Dyson sphere should have been. Should have been falafel based. Oh God! What a mistake! I, I wasn't displeased with these, but I just like I I ate it, and I'm like, I don't actually know if this would be considered good or not. Like, did you fry yours, or did you kind of like bake them, or fry like pan fry them? them? Uh-huh. Bake them, yeah. Yeah, I um, I uh. Once again, had flour on the counter, and uh, I didn't need nearly as much, so it was a mess to clean up for no reason. Did you use chickpea flour? Uh, no, I just used standard bleached flour. That is the but... problem. Oh, falafel is chickpea flour. So whole, whole well, it point. seems like it's already pretty chickpea heavy, heavy, right? How did you make it with chickpeas and? not use the chickpea flour let's Um, let's all just swap falafel recipes and compare and contrast (laughs) yeah so i had chickpeas that i threw into a blender and then i added like a very small amount of flour so i started with full chickpeas and i added what else did i put in there i put in okay um, so so when we do it when we make garlic when we make ours it's it's um uh oh i see that's the problem uh, when White we pepper. make when we make ours, it's uh, uh, doing things. Uh, it's all chickpea flour. Like we make it out of chickpea flour. Okay. And then add okay. water. Okay. I uh, the chickpeas carried enough water that I did not need to add much fluid. Yes. Fl- fluid is not a cooking term, is it? You never hear someone in the kitchen like, I need more fluid in this recipe. <laughs> no, that's not a cooking term. No, uh, no, not so much. So juicy. Saying, juicy would be the cooking. It's not juicy enough is what you would say. No. It's no? Not, that's not what you would say either. What would you say? Uh, it doesn't have enough liquid, perhaps. It's dry. Mm. Dry. That's probably what you would say. You wouldn't refer to the quantity of fluids. Rather, you would say it is dry. Let's All right, there out. we go. It is. I, I have successfully. It took me that long to successfully post the reply in the correct uh, account from yeah. Binary Jazz to. They've changed their name. It's no longer what did I, I don't remember what I said it was last time, but it, it was like an actual name. Now it's something in Russian. Um, oh, it was Chris last time, I believe, if I remember correctly. No, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was. No, it was Chris. Hey, I'm pre- pretty sure it's not. <laughs> All right. Well, here we are. Yep. I sitting in front of the abyss. I love this. At least on my side, it just looks like you can't tell how far the wall is behind me. It could be immediately behind me. It could be it miles. It looks like it's me. immediately behind you. Oh, it is. But in the video I have, it so... looks as though it could be <laughs> way back. <laughs> Not when I move my head. The shadow. Yeah, the shadow. The the pretty way. much, the shadow just kills it just instantly. Yeah. I need to be further from it. And then it would yeah. just be like, what is that wall? Oh, it's just nothing. I'm sitting in front of nothingness. Wow. I decided I was. Yeah. Uh, so topic, do we have a topic? We do. The topic is Agrigor. Agrigor? Yeah, it's spelled E-G-R-E-G-O-R-E. E G R E G O R E. Well, E G R E G O R E. Yeah, I'm so pretty Gore sure the word the end, and egg yeah. is at the beginning. Okay, got it. Yes. Agrigor. Yes. Is that related to egregious? Yes, it absolutely is. See, uh, okay. Also related to gregarious. Yeah, so it would be like an offensive amount of talking. There's a no, there's a lot of things that I'm that, done here. There's a lot of things this probably is, but I really want to go down uh, into the depths of what it's not. Um, mm-hmm. So because what it sounds like it should be egregore, and maybe this, maybe perhaps this was just related to the fact that I was looking at a whole bunch of D and D monsters uh, about 20 minutes ago, 
Um, so out of character for you. <laughs> Who are you even? Possibly, possibly that's related. But like immediately, th- this this sounds like a, a, some sort of monster. Uh, and, and, and Egregore, you 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 stumble into the dungeon and you are confronted with this huge Egregore. And the Egregore, absolute. <laughs> the Egregore has sort of a pointy head. Uh, mm-hmm. It is. It's covered mm-hmm. in reddish fur. It's got long mm-hmm. nails. Uh, it's mm-hmm. got two large eyes and a mouthful of teeth. And its nose is sort of hidden behind this this like uh, wolfman like fur that just covers its entire body. Yeah. So when I heard but it has Egregore, a bear patch I, on its on its on its chest like a like a gorilla. I absolutely. Oh, that. Okay. I absolutely. That was just a bit of detail beyond what I needed um, <laughs> to make it real for me. Uh, I absolutely, uh, when I heard this, uh, did not think monster. <laughs> so I am going to say that your uh, recent uh, D&D research colored your opinion. It so Egregore, like it, it has two attacks per turn <laughs> um, with its claws. Um, it, likes to, it likes to do a bear hug. Like if it can get you in its reach, it'll, it'll bear hug you. And then it'll and then you're and hold you in place. Is is it and is it a form of bite your brain? Yeah, no. <laughs> um like is it is people, it a kind like to eat people from the brain first, like brain down. Like the brain is the the appetizer. <laughs> is it is it a specific kind of orbit? Or, or what am I thinking of? What's the kind of orbit that I'm thinking of that sounds similar to this? Orbit. <laughs> it's you, not orbit. You should know that I don't bring anything. That's remote. fair. It's not a, yeah, it's not going to be a space topic. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe it is. And that's what I would say if I wanted to throw. I'll be so head. embarrassed at the end. And I will then out my evil twin be like, or my better twin and be like, well, you should have picked on the astronaut, not me. <laughs> the fourth space mission with Sergeant Agrigor. <laughs> Sergeant Agrigor. Yeah. Um, it's, I stick by what I said earlier. Is the combination of egregious and gregarious, an offensive amount of talking. Egregious. That, that egregious. I was means on that. the subway with an egregore, and I just could not wait to get. On. I actually got off a stop early because they were driving me nuts. Yeah, because if you're on the subway with an egregore, then uh, they're big and they're they won't snowy, shut up. And they're... <laughs> 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 so this. This this large pointy headed uh, hairy creature just like likes yes. to talk a lot is the thing. This is so. I mean, for all of the people that all of our listeners, uh, if you want to send fan art uh, of of the Egregore, please please. I think uh, I'm good because I want to see uh, the fan art of of an Egregore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we um I road tripped yesterday uh, with the kids. Uh, the old two older kids and we listened to a podcast called um smash boom, smash boom best so close and smash boom best like has two people present alternative things and then a judge decides which one is better and so one of the episodes was um <sighs> mermaids versus uh, uh bigfoot and then another way was uh sharks versus skunks uh Anyway, I feel like what one? Um, on the first one, I don't remember, and on the second one, I think it was skunks. It's pretty compelling. Con- no, it wasn't. It was sharks. It was sharks because they tied, and then the tiebreaker was someone singing a song about. Oh no, not even singing a song. They created sandwiches appropriate for their shark or skunk and the shark was like i'm just making a skunk sandwich to hell with it i'm a shark what are you gonna do and that kind of closed the deal i think perhaps i'm recalling incorrectly because i wasn't super engaged in it i was uh i was driving i know you don't even know who won for like mermaid versus bigfoot you're not super yeah well you know how i feel about cryptozoology when you're driving what's that you're not engaged in the podcast that you're listening to when you're driving. Uh, I I usually am uh, if it's um, like a podcast I chose, but <laughs> it's a podcast that worked for the kids. I was like, well, they're quiet, and I will well, I will daydream about space. 
All I can think about is that mermaids would obviously win in this case because Bigfoot is one Yeti or Sasquatch. It's like a particular one. I was hoping I was hoping you're gonna be like, because Sasquatch isn't even real. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> No, I find I find it interesting that you tune out of because I I even even we've been listening to audiobooks in the car with the kids for I don't know years. That was the thing that got them to shut up when they stopped just sleeping through car rides. Uh, well, not shut up. I, I shouldn't say that. Stop like fighting with each other and get really aggravated with each other because it's a pain in the ass to drive for six hours and be stuck in the car for that long. Uh, that I mean, yeah. it's not like it's it's not like you know, shut up, kids uh yeah so but i always listen to the books i mean even if i'm not super into the book i'm always like like it's, it's more engaging than like the freaking cement between here and like through nevada into death valley or whatever yeah this trip is kind of fun so the first two hours are very rural from where we are to the interstate there are faster ways to get to the interstate, but they are not as direct to get to Florida. So the first two hours are like head generally southish until you run into Interstate 95. And that path changes like the GPS. Like every time I run into it's like, eh, let's try this way. So that's pretty fantastic. Then the next two hours are Interstate 95 in South Carolina, which is only two lanes. Uh, and that is uh, probably what, where I was mostly distracted because I was trying to survive that portion of road. Uh, and then you get to Georgia, and then you're about two hours from where we were headed to in Florida, and it opens up to three lanes. And at that point, it's really just smooth sailing, and you're just driving on the interstate, and there's plenty of space, and nobody's trying to run you off the road in a big truck. Uh, people get actually pulled over for speeding. It's a very different experience in Georgia versus South Carolina. South Carolina is where um, the next Mad Max will shoot, I believe. <laughs> It's, it's just crazy. I've, I've been on 95 in South Carolina where like, oh, we're like at a complete stop because a truck literally crashed into another truck and someone was sleeping in the back and was ejected through the windshield. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we probably should stop traffic for that. And then a helicopter lands and takes off and then the tow truck shows up and then you can drive again. Like I, I could do with a lot less, like a significant less amount of that. Like <laughs> none would be ideal. So I have a secret route I take sometimes uh, that goes through like. Don't tell us about it. It's secret. <laughs> oh no, I can tell you because honestly, like, even if even if I increase the quantity of cars that are on that road by a thousand percent, it would still only be like a thousand cars over ninety miles. It. <laughs> the first time we drove it, like I think we went for like twenty miles and didn't see another car. Like we drove through like on the map cities, and it was literally like that traffic light used to work. And there was nothing in here. There's like rundown. Like, I don't know if the, the city's just abandoned or if the people there are just have given. It's, it's really uh, something. Anyway, we're going to drive that way on Sunday and just like be appalled. Oh, um, and there's a camel. There's a farm that has a camel on that route. So right near the end, we'll get to, hopefully get to see the camel. The camel's out. The first time Ron was like, and that's a camel. What? Yeah, there's a camel over there. <laughs> Fortunately, because there's nothing, that your line of sight is not obstructed. So I can just look over my shoulders. I'm driving. Oh my gosh, that's a camel. I know. That's what I said. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just didn't expect to see a camel here. There's oh a, no, no one did. There's well, a lie uh, about. It's going to be the camel. <laughs> right. There's a place on the side of the highway between here and. Well, between here and Vegas, is it that direction, or is it between here and Reno? Anywhere, it's Oof. it's it's in Nevada. Somewhere between here and casinos. No, it's it's between here and Reno. So it's on that would be I eighty, uh, and it's on it's when we're going. So it'd be on like I guess the east side of the road, uh, and it is this old residence i suppose but like it's covered in bones of various kinds with huge structures built out of bones and the bones are attached to the building and like it's got all this it looks like mad max it looks crazy looking and every time we pass it we're like we want to like i want to stop there but you're like not anywhere near any place that you could stop 
Uh, and we found it on Atlas Obscura at one point. Um, it's, it exists on Atlas Obscura, so I could probably find it and look it up, and, and it'll be in the I show. I camel exists on Atlas Obscura. Probably. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I think the story is that it used to be, like, there used to be an artist that lived there, and they died, and now it belongs to, like, their brother or something, but it's not maintained, but they want to make it a museum or some sort of, some weird thing. So it's still there, but, like, nobody's, like, taking care of it or, like, yeah. Um <laughs> But it's it's fascinating. Um, there's also just speaking of things on the side of the road that are weird. Um, outside of Cedar City, Utah, which Iowa, uh, oh, is which is I'm near, thinking the other thing, which is near uh, um, Goblin Valley. There is uh, a sculpture. Just making stuff up. I'm not making stuff up. There's a sculpture <laughs> that is uh, designed uh, based on the Fibonacci sequence. Um, so it's got like these these essentially cubes that are piled on top of each other, and the way that they are piled on top of each other uh, is um, based on the on the Fibonacci sequence. Awesome. We another, use Fibonacci. Another, another one of those things that that are like like oh I should stop and and pull over and, and take a look at that thing, but you're you know, I'm not gonna do that. On your right. way somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> we got we got casinos to hit. <laughs> and clearly. Um we use Fibonacci for estimating story points on tickets, which to me feels like all right, number one, it's it's complete bullshit because it's story points. Number two, like we're enforcing Fibonacci. So like it will never be accurate, which is it's kind of liberating. My yeah, estimates are like good point. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, Fibonacci Fibonacci points for for S, for story points is all about like using the numbers to to estimate the level of uncertainty rather than the level of known complexity. Like the less you know, the bigger the number gets. It's not about yes. like it's not about how hard it is necessarily because you might not you might you might think it's easy, but then you get into it. But you might think it's, it might sound easy, but when you get into it, because you didn't, there's a lot of unknowns that it becomes a lot bigger. So you ba- you estimate yes. based on uncertainty. Uh, yeah, and in addition to that, it's really easy to be like, well, the difference between like a three and a five, okay, but it's definitely not an eight, you know, like, and it's definitely not a you know, well, five or eight. Well, it's not a thirteen. Like it, it, the growth obviously caps top boundaries obviously i don't know Egre- what was the word Egre- uh egregore Egre- egregore egregore that's the one is that the one that's not the one and now i'm now what? i'm on atlas obscura trying to find the oh oh okay I was like, I can I'm tell the- you, I can confirm that it is the topic. <laughs> no, Egregore is definitely the, the topic. Let and me so refer we- to my notes. Yes. Yes. It's a monster uh, in Dungeons and Dragons. I've heard it's not a monster. I, of that, I'm certain. Disgusting. I'm pretty certain my answer is not correct. I'm also certain yours is not correct. Is it a monster? <laughs> um, so, I mean, like, if I don't think there's a winner here. But I guess if I had to choose one over the other, Chris is probably closer. <laughs> I'm closer. <laughs> um, so it's a group thought form. I originally came across this concept in Chaos Magic. Wait, wait, slow down. Say it again. It's a group thought form. Oh, that sounds awesome. So I came across it in Chaos Magic. So it's kind of like, do you know the, the, the term servitor? No, no, that's no. also a Dungeons and Dragons monster. <laughs> that's the one that controls the egregore. It's very D and D. So a servitor is something that's that's a kind of a, a thought form that's based on one individual, and an egregore is something that has been detached from an individual and is now part of a group mindset. So like, you can create it either intentionally or unintentionally, and it's basically an autonomous thing with the power to influence. So it's just like. Um, I so mean, like, like the way that we decided that Dyson sphere actually means uh, like yeah. a ball of meat. Yeah. Exactly. Is it is it is it more likely to 
be unobserved though. So like we obviously like played with Dyson Sphere and that's gross. I didn't mean to say it that way. We've obviously like <laughs> kicked the thought around. Shit, I'm failing at this. We've obviously <laughs> we have we have clearly explored it. Explored the idea. Is is Egregore more likely to be uh, unexplored group thought, or is it is it observed? Is it is the actual observation of it a requirement of it existing? No, no, it cannot be often unobserved, but like, it's also stuff. I mean, it's so cool. It can be anything from like, like Santa, Santa is an egregore because we have this concept of Santa. Um, Mm, Okay, got it. So Um, this is, uh, this is, I love this topic for so many reasons, but it, it actually puts a word to a thing that I, a concept I haven't been able to apply language to. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to necessarily be like I I stumbled across it through like the occult, but it can be very like non occulty. Like there are lots of like concepts of a corporation that can be very of that like entity because it's like it's the same thing as if you like I don't know um, some memes. Memes are a good example of things that are egregores, like that that yeah. a certain idea or concept. It's very hokey, but I find a lot in teams. So like agency life, obviously, is a spot where you're working in teams, but that often you will be in meetings and there is like a a concept that everyone gets, but there's not like a great way to describe. So people are like trying to apply a word to it. This thing they're trying to apply the word to is the egregore. Like it's this concept we all already understand, but we've never defined together, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know, like, like to the Santa version, like Santa is is masking this idea that like, oh, gift giving to other people should feel good and be about like, you know, not about like uh, this this like receiving thing, right? It's a it's this it, it's this like giver that we uh, hold in high regard, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there's this concept, this egregore concept of like. It's, I feel like this is the undercurrent of just any kind of group uh, consistently. And, and, and we all struggle to, to fight, to, to like n- potentially expose it, but then also digest it, not digest it, expose it and understand it. Apparently I'm still hung up on the Dyson sphere. I found the thing I was looking for, Thunder Mountain Monument in Imlay, Nevada. Ah, right, Imlay. <laughs> okay, we have four and a half minutes, and I have 15 questions that I'm ripping off 15. from Steve Colbert. <laughs> okay, let's do it. <laughs> Wait. Best, it's lightning round. Best sandwich. Uh, the next one. Uh, peanut butter and jelly. Obviously. What's one thing you own that you should really throw out? Everything. Oh, God. I have a pair of boxer shorts that has have been like tearing like a hole near the seam That's for not, like we don't weeks. need to go we That's don't need to for yourself, Gary. Yeah, we don't we don't need to go <laughs> you could have stopped better. at boxer shorts <laughs> I know I'm sorry I love boxers how dare what you scariest animal scariest animal egregore uh, uh, <laughs> shark <laughs> apples or oranges apples <laughs> have you ever asked someone for their autograph yes yes what do you think happens when we die? Our energy shoots out through uh, a cosmic colander into the universe. And our energy, stop. Our energy is consistently trying to puncture its way back in to this sphere that we're in, this non Dyson sphere, as it were. Uh, Chris? Often uh, energy gets trapped and not able to make it through the colander holes. And that is why when people die, we still have like these times we interact with them. I'm still trying to figure that out, that one out. Favorite action movie? Top Gun? You can Six, always pass too. Six String yeah. Samurai? Okay. Favorite smell? Egregore. <laughs> um, uh, vanilla pine pine trees mm, that's good least favorite smell my body odor <laughs> uh tea tree oil maybe maybe not patchouli 
What? I like patchouli. <laughs> Exercise. <laughs> Worth it? Yes. Probably. No. Yes. That's my official answer. <laughs> I'm to like that. Flat or sparkling? Flat what? or sparkling? Flat or sparkling? Uh, or sparkling. We're talking about wall finishes? I don't, sparkling. Probably water. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the obvious one. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Most used app on your phone? Slack, sadly. Twitter. You get one song to listen to for the rest of your life. What is it? Oh. Chris is going to have a meltdown. <laughs> <laughs> Something I haven't heard yet. Pass. <laughs> what number am I thinking of? Five. 13. No. <laughs> Describe the rest of your life in five words. I live, I then die. <laughs> Hopefully not so bad. Cool. <laughs> not soon, but maybe. Shrug. <laughs> That's it. That's it. There's 15 <laughs> questions? Yeah. 15 que- I mean, we oh. still have a minute left. <laughs> I feel like I want to explore some of these a little bit more. Which ones do I want to explore a little bit more? Well, I love that you both agreed. Why did you both choose apples? Because I like apples. I thought about accessibility to eating and like I can bite into an apple and orange. There's that work of getting in there. And if I had to choose one of the other, like right now, an apple sounds pretty damn good. I choose apple because you can put peanut butter on an apple. Yeah, there's that. But you could put peanut butter on an orange. You, could. you wouldn't be happy with it, but no. you can do it. <laughs> you can do it. You're welcome to. You weirdo. <laughs> I'm just not a big fan of, of the stringiness of, of oranges. and I, I like citrus in some cases. I, I feel like citrus is magical in some cases. Like, like it's not the mouth feel, you know, of the citrus is, is very... Mouth feel is also not a cooking word we use. I guess, I have, no, it is. It appears. It is. Okay. I, I, I said... It. You can still use it. Okay. I think, I think Allison went and, and I, I think umami I like, is is the proper cooking term for mouthfeel. I believe so. Oh. Hmm. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at Binary Jazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.